website. I'm still trying to um, the other broadcast to go up and running. And it's giving me a hard time. But according to this, it says we're live. So welcome. Today, I want to talk about this dream that I've been holding off on. And um, I'm starting to notice more and more um, shares on articles and um, and just like just you know what people call conspiracy theories and just all this stuff. And I started noticing it more, and I have not yet said anything about my dream. And so um, I wanted to talk about that. Okay, so April 13th, 2020, I had a dream. I know that if anybody is following up on what I'm delivering, the same night was the night that I dreamt of the um, teenagers being possessed and the possession took place on, you know, media so the this dream was april 13th and um in my dream let me go back to it because i wrote it down obviously you have to write these things down whether it's um prophetic or not you should write down your dreams and um because you just never know. The Lord could be speaking to you. There's different realms of it. And you need to find out what's happening. Is it something you ate last night? Or is it something that the Lord is actually telling you? So after I dreamt about the children, the teenagers that were actually um, a possessed generation, I woke up. And, and after I woke up, I prayed into the first dream. Okay? And then I can feel... In the moment of the middle of the night, I can feel the darkness rising up in the nation. And so I prayed until I fell back to sleep. And then I had another dream. And in this dream, I was in the hospital in another woman's body. I get dreams where it's not me. It's always me in someone else's body. Don't ask because I don't have the answer to that. All I know is this is how it happens. Um, so I'm in the, in the hospital in this other woman's body, which looked like a, almost like a FEMA camp. So when I can see out the window, we were in a hospital, but you can see that there's barbed wires. There is a type of facility where we're being kept in. And um, I had on, uh, light blue scrubs and I was walking down the hallway where we were lined up um, in this part of the hospital was all women there were men doctors but the women that were patients were it was women as could possibly be that we were separated from the men so I'm in line and um I walk into the room. There's still another woman being taken care of. And I saw on the table what you're seeing in this live stream. So what you're seeing there is the actual, uh, pretty much very close to what I was seeing on the medical table. And on the medical table, and I'm just going to note this, guys, that this, this was a dream before everybody started coming out with conspiracy theories. This was before people, you know, started saying that this would happen. I'm just telling you that this was not a dream that was mustered up because I'm listening to um, conspiracy theories or media or whatever the case may be, because to be honest with you, I'm too busy during the day attending to my life and the call of God in our family's life for me to be on Facebook 24 seven. So I'm gonna note it again. I am way too busy 
doing things like praying, interceding, and being a mother, a wife, and, and having to attend to my house and the call of God in our in the ministry. So I'm too busy to read all these articles or things that are being sent into my inbox. Guys, love you to pieces. But the majority of the stuff that I get in my inbox, I cannot read. I don't have time to read it. I'm too caught up in the word of God to be reading those things. And I'm saying that they're not relevant. I'm just saying personally in my life right now, in this moment, I do not have time to read every article, every, every suspicion. I don't have it. So I'm spending a lot of more time listening to the voice of God for this hour than I am to the voices of the media, which I have emphasized in my last video, guys. I read some pages out of the satanic book, and I'm going to tell you something. He's got an agenda, and one of his great agendas is social media. And when he's using social media, he's using it as a form of mass communication. And he is using all types of different people, doctors, nurses, teachers, all types of professionals that people swear they can trust. I'm just going to lay that out again. Where you think you can trust them. So what I'm saying is that there's a lot of fake news that is happening right now that needs to be uh, discerned. The Lord bring back discernment because we're not really using discernment. We need discernment. The sermon is wisdom. We need wisdom in this hour. And the only way you would be able to filter those things is through the word of God on a solid foundation. Just going to lay that out there because I don't want anybody coming in here thinking I'm some type of cuckoo. I'm not a cuckoo. I'm very solid in my thinking. And I'm just laying out a dream that I have seen and heard a lot of things going on. And I'm just going to sell I'm just going to state what I saw in my dream and you can discern, pray on it with me on, you know, for us to have wisdom. Oh, thank you, Megan. Wow. <laughs> You're so funny. Okay. So love that girl. So the dream, the dream is this. Um, I am in the hospital. It is a hospital that I can see outside that is one of those facilities where they're keeping people kind of guarded somehow. I saw Bob Boring outside the window. I felt in my dream as if I was in some type of refuge camp, okay? Now, anybody who knows the word refuge makes you feel like safety, like there's some type of safety in this place, right? So people would go to a place of safety because we're believing that the hospital is a safe place for someone to take care of us. Now, remember I stated, there's doctors, nurses, and actual professional people who have degrees and are certified to be in these positions that are taking care of our people that also is being led by Satan as well. So discernment, we need to purge out what's pure and what's not pure. Okay, I walk into the room, I look to the right, this woman is getting a shot in the midst of almost like this area. And I'm standing there and I'm saying, why am I here? What's, why, what's, what's the purpose of me being here? So I look at the first doctor and I said, was I diagnosed? Is what I said. Did, did I take a test? If then he's like, oh, yes, you were diagnosed. You took a test. Where's my results? I've never seen my results. I'm not positive is what I said. Was I positive? And now there, now the what, first woman walks out. I move into her position, and I'm looking like, why am I being? Why am I? It's almost like if I was being forced to take this because I was told that my results came back positive. But yeah, I never seen the results. So I didn't have a physical proof of my results. Yet I was being, uh, I was put into this position to take on a vaccine that I didn't have any recollection of even taking a test for. Well, sure enough, 
I looked down and I saw this thing you're seeing on the screen. And in there, there was some type of little small thing that was being put into one of the vials and then being injected. After I came out, the, the shot was given to me on the side of my butt. I said, I asked again before I got the shot, was I diagnosed? And at this point, they looked at each other and there was no response. There's this thing called, um, uh, like in the medical field, there's this confidentiality and you're not allowed, if you're not a doctor, to give the diagnosis. I went to medical school and I graduated from um, cardiovascular technician. I went through the whole course. I'm telling you, I graduated. I have my, my degree in that. And I never went into the medical field. Don't ask me why. All I'm telling you is that I'm very, I'm very aware of the medical aspects. And there is a thing where even if we see a diagnosis, even if we can see the diagnosis in their, in their test result, we are not legally allowed to tell them that they have been diagnosed. Okay, that is for the doctor to do. So that very moment when the two of them, when I've asked again, have I been diagnosed? And the two of them could not tell me, which means to tell me neither one of them were certified and licensed to give me a diagnosis, but were only able to give me. A medical assistant, guys, can give you a shot. They can give you a shot. Me and my degree, I can give you a shot. Anybody can give you a shot. Met, but what I'm saying is that in that moment, there was no, no one can tell me, which means to tell me in the natural that no one in the room was a doctor. I don't remember taking the test. I don't even know how we got there, but I knew there was a line and one by one, they were getting a vaccine. One by one, there was getting a vaccine, but in this vaccine, there was another agenda. There was another agenda. So I just felt today is May 7th. It was April 13th. I waited on a while, a few weeks, prayed on it, spoke to the Lord about it, make sure that it was something he needed me to deliver. And I feel like this is the time I needed to deliver this. For whatever reason, we need to pray. If it's of God, he will reveal it. If it's nothing, it will go away. It would never even come to pass. But we will know that there was another agenda with this vaccine. Now, this was before they even promoted a vaccine. I was weeks after that they started talking about a vaccine. Just recently, people were talking about a vaccine. Recently, we have a lot of... A lot of, lot of you know, presumptions and all this stuff going around, but I've, I've waited. And if the stream is what is of the Lord, then we would know that this is a warning. There's another agenda. The enemy is on the prowl. And what do I mean by the enemy? I want to make this clear. There is um, the darkness. There is a light. Everybody knows that. There is good people and there is bad people. Good people, bad people. When I say the enemy, the enemy uses people who are willing to be wicked. It's that simple. Anybody who's willing to do a wicked act, that is evil. So if there is an agenda with this vaccine, then we need to pray and ask the Lord for wisdom on how to move forward. Because in my dream, there was lies, telling people they were positive. There were schemes, which means that there was more than just a vaccine going in. There was a lot going on. If we, we can sit and look at the details, there was a lot going on. And we need to be smart smarter than the enemy. We need to have wisdom in this hour to discern. 
please don't read everything on the media. There's a lot of lies, a lot of lies right now. You can't even discern what is true because they're so good at lying. Spend more time with the Lord so that we can have a foot so over the enemy. So we can be two steps ahead. Don't eat everything from every tree in this very moment. Be wise. Come with counsel. Be around people of wisdom so that you don't fall to the wiles of the enemy. It is a very, 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 very dark time. And I think a lot of us know it. It's not a joke. We're in a place where people are very wicked. Just the other day, a young man was, was shot to death by two men. Just shot. For what reason? And the video gets exposed. For what reason could two older grown men have to do with a kid and shoot him? And shoot him. The video's there. It's exposed. It's exposing the wickedness. And that's just not it. Just the other day, another man was shot in the middle of the street. Broad daylight. And people are chan chanting to the officer, kill him, kill him, kill him. Take him down. When the man finally dies, you know what people were saying? They were saying, bye-bye. Lights out. I'm telling you, we're in a place in our nation that has no heart for life, for life, for existence. It is horrible what I'm witnessing. But the more I press into the Lord, the more I can see that there is a coming of a light. And that is the body of Christ raising up and seeking to pull down the injustice on the earth. And so, yes, there's bad, but there is a good. And if we were pressing more to, to, to the Lord, he will use us in, pla in places, in areas of mountains that we've never even dreamed of. And so I just wanted to release this. I'm not looking for any comments or anything like that. I just feel like if the Lord says, you know, warn, then we warn. If it's nothing, it's nothing, you know, but if it is something and something does move forward in this aspect, then we need, we need to have the wisdom of the Lord to lead us. And so that's it. That's really all that, um, Oh, uh, there was a last piece. There was a last piece in my dream. Um, after I came out of getting the shot and I moved forward, the, sh the, the scene changed. Now I'm in a waiting room and there was a baby in my hands. And the baby in my hands actually spoke. It had to be about four months. Now babies don't speak at that age. But the, I looked down and the baby said, I'm sick. I put my hand over the baby's head and the baby had a fever and I began to tell the nurses the baby has a fever they left us in this kind of form of a waiting room with, with plastic glasses and um can can I tell you that there was food on their side coming in just coming in and they were just eating and they were just just you know without a care in the world um they just left me there with the baby and a fever and I, I I'm still praying on the Lord for this because the baby is very symbolic the fact that the baby is not naturally in four months they don't speak English they speak baby this baby spoke English and said I'm sick and I watched as the nurses and the doctors feasted and so there's a lot that still needs to take place of what the Lord is saying I'm holding the baby as a mother. You know, the mother's very sim has a symbolism of nurturing a lot of things. Then the baby is another symbolism. And then the fact that they were feasting. It's, it can, you know, it can mean a lot of things. 
I, I can see it as, you know, the Lord's preparing a table for our enemies, you know, and but at this moment, it's like I'm at the table of the enemy because they're feasting. So there's a lot. There's a lot in that last part of the dream that I'm still processing. But the first part of the dream was very processed. And, um, you know, we need to be wise and we need to lean more towards the Lord. Please don't get soaked up into media's uh, articles, uh, videos. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. I know we're still stuck. We're not really moving much. And so therefore we're, we're in an area in, in our life right now that, you know, gives us a lot of time, but use that time wisely. Use that time wisely because we're going to need it. We're going to need it. The Bible prophecies have not all been fulfilled. There's a lot more that's still coming. And so therefore, if you read it and you look at the prophecies, there's going to be a lot more darkness on the earth. And we need to be a light. We need to shine bright and we need to have our foundation in Christ, unmovable and unshakable. And know that, you know, what the word says, you know, and how we're to live out through that. So I am done. And I guess I'm just going to, I'm just going to pray for wisdom. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you, God, that you're almighty and that you're sovereign, God. Lord, we love your providence. Father, we just thank you, God, that your kingdom reigns. We thank you that your light pierces through the darkness. We thank you that the light is found in your people, Lord. Father, we thank you that we know the end of the story. We know where the truth is really found. And so, Lord, I just, I just pray for the people right now that they would not be like a boat without an anchor where they're being tossed left and right where nothing in their life is stabled by the winds of the media by the winds of suspicion by the winds of conspiracy lord we read right now we speak to the winds that come around the people of god and we say peace be still and we cancel out voices that are speaking of all different ways of the wind god and we just enhance the voice of jesus we enhance the voice of the word we enhance your word god let this not be a season where the sheep will stray because they don't know your voice so, Lord, we just thank you, God, that you are the good shepherd and you're with us in this field and you're leading and guiding us, God, and you're calling us into a deeper relationship with you. And so, Lord, we just thank you for this hour that you are releasing a wisdom and restoring your discernment upon your church. And God, I just ask that you would continue to bless us with the hearing of your voice. And with the blessings that are found in Jesus Christ in this season. Amen. And so, yes, Kianda, open our ears. Open our ears. Our, open our ears. Last night we did our, our discipleship class. And I, I just, I said, Lord, we just can't continue this way. We can't continue with tradition. We can't continue in this system. You know, we need to, need we need, we need what God originally tended from the beginning of time to unfold itself in the body of Christ. We need a rising ecclesia, a governmental body of Jesus Christ. And so um, that's a whole nother topic, but yeah, take heed, pray, spend more time with the Lord Try not to be on Facebook too much. Um, it's not really where you're going to find the things of, 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 you know, Jesus. You might find some, some real true words, but a lot right now in the media is not true at all. And so in order to discern what is true, what is not, you need to be with the Lord. Spend more time with him. Spend, this is the reason why we have so much time right now. You know, before we used to say we're too busy. 
now you're not busy. So spend more time with him. And um, I hope that this blesses you. And until the next time, love you guys. Be blessed. Today is Thursday. Be thirsty for the Lord. Amen. Thirsty Thursday. <laughs> See you next time.